Let's get in to our first sketch of the night and let's talk about our cold open. So NFL on Fox, if any of you know me, you know, I'm a Giants fan. So I was, uh, yeah, I had to endure more of this as, as the show uh, started tonight. But NFL on Fox opens up where we get to see Kurt, Ter- Terry, Howie, Michael and Jimmy played by Keenan, Molly, Mikey, Devin and J.A.J., our NFL on Fox crew that's been around for many, many years. And they're recapping uh, the Eagles destroying the Giants tonight and and then uh, we do get, uh, you know, featured uh, reporter Pam Oliver played by Ego as well. But really, the crux of this cold open is an excuse to bring out Bowen Yang's George Santos impression, who is there on the field. And you knew the coming into this, if you're following politics or following any of the late night TV shows, that George Santos is the biggest deal right now. This is the congressman who lied about basically everything. And the question was, who was going to play George Santos going into the night? You had to figure it was going to be somebody. Some people speculated John Lovitz, who appeared on Jimmy Fallon's show last night and played him. But no, no Lovitz tonight on the show, at least. Uh, but instead, we get Bowen Yang's first appearance as George Santos as the main part of this cold open. So, Bill, what did you think about our NFL and Fox cold open this night? And by some people, you mean me, John, because I was <laughs> praying for a Lovitz cameo. It didn't have to be Santos, whatever he wanted to come on and do. Uh, but th- this worked on pretty much every level. Um, I love the NFL opens when they do them. They don't do them often enough. I love that they got to roast the Giants. Sorry, John. Uh, and uh, I, I really like J.A.J.'s Jimmy Johnson. Uh, it's a little of a deep cut, I think. I don't know that a lot of people do a Jimmy Johnson uh, impersonation. And Devin's uh, Strahan was was very good as well. But then, of course, like you said, you know, we, we get into the Santos stuff. A lot of good you know, rolling the the lies down that, you know, he had 17 rebounds and 10 RBIs, mixing his metaphors, uh, said he was the real Bo Jackson. Uh, and then it, it's not even over there. They go to the predictions and they talk about the Giants being upset and how he says, no, no, I, what I said was the Giants will be upset that they lost. So I, I thought of you, John, when they said that as well. So overall, a lot of good impressions on this Uh a decent way to to cover a subject just like Will Smith last year that you had to cover. Um, it's in all the all the papers, as they say. So th- this worked. Yeah, that's an interesting comparison because I think when we see Bowen as Santos later on an update, we could co- sort of compare how SNL addressed the Will Smith stuff last year because I remember coming on the Hot Take Show and people seem to have a major problem with the fact that they just hit the Will Smith thing so many times in that episode. Whereas tonight we did get it twice and, you know, does one take away from another? So maybe we'll put a pin in that conversation until we get back to weekend update. But let's just talk about what we saw from the cold open tonight. So, Kaylee, over to you for your thoughts. Yeah, I'm always a little nervous whenever it's like a sports or like a sports panel just because it's not my world. I think, you know, if that is your world that must be really exciting. It's just not mine. So I'm always like, oh no, am I going to get all the references? No, I didn't know who everyone was. Although as soon as they showed Devin as Michael Strahan, I cracked up. There was like a glaze over his eyes and a slight head tilt upwards that it was just really, it was hilarious. And Molly, I thought also really shown in this one. Um, They were both hilarious. I really like Bowen's George Santos, um, particularly when the surprise of the the drag character <laughs> came back in, I I really really uh, thought that was um, a great uh, surprise. Uh, but yeah, so I, I got fairly won over, even though it was a sporty one. Yeah, for sure. And I knew that the drag uh, aspect of things was definitely going to be something big. I think it was Katara Bravachi, if I, I remember that correctly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, this was this was fun for me. I, I still don't know as like an individual sketch if hiding the George Santos impression in the NFL on Fox Cold Open was exactly the way to go. Like, I sort of feel like, uh, by the way, Colin Jost and uh, Streeter Seidel wrote this one. So, um, you know, Colin, oftentimes he'll write uh, and he wrote a previous NFL on Fox uh, Cold Open, I believe at the beginning of season 47 at one point because I remember JJ playing uh, I'm going to say Joe Buck at, at some point last year um, but yeah and that that was typical for a sports thing so it sort of felt like a little bit like it felt like a long way to go to get the George Santos impression in there I don't know that was just sort of me true um, Yeah, like, would I have preferred if it opened up on like a different scene with George Santos there a little bit quicker 
perhaps yeah i i just i don't know if i if the if the point of the cold open was an escalation to how george santos is going to work his way into anything like he's just going to show up on the field and then something else is going to escalate into something like it's going to keep going and you're not going to expect him to come into different scenes let's say then that is an interesting uh conceit for the cold open but i don't know that they went all the way with that in the way that i would have liked so anyways nice decent cold open for the start of the season i'm a sports guy so i always enjoy getting to see like a sports cold open every now and then it's a little bit refreshing but to me i just don't know that like both parts of it like fully work together as a sketch however uh i'll say bowen's impression of george santos was very good I really liked it and I felt like he is probably the right person to play Santos, at least out of the SNL cast, right? I mean, that's what that's what you guys always say in our chats. You say, give it to a cast member. Don't bring in an alumni. Don't bring in uh, somebody from the outside. So it goes to Bo and Yang here. My only uh, wish, which we'll get to talk about, is like I do feel like there were some repetitive lines that we ended up getting on update a little bit through uh, the the actual script of what he was saying. So uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah, uh, thanks, chat. Please put in your comments on uh, everything and we'll bring them up on and screen. One more final point, a small point, but you know, they're talking about the predictions at the end of this and they, they cut to uh, one of them having a prediction that there'd be a hundred Verizon ads with uh, Paul Giamatti as Einstein. How are you not mentioning <laughs> Cecily? Jesus, she's in every one of those commercials. That's a perfect meta moment to, to kind of put in there for, for the true fans. So. Oh, well, I feel like they turned the page on that. But yes, I, I do agree with you. Yeah. That is an interesting point. Um, and I actually love some of the comments in the chat tonight because it, it sort of uh, reminds me of a concept that we have seen previously on SNL where they've broken format, which is like if you're going to use uh, the idea of a character or an impression popping up in places you don't expect, perhaps bringing a Bowen as Santos back popping up into sketches we didn't expect throughout the night or maybe interstitials between sketches is perhaps the way to go to break format a la Will Ferrell, you know, showing up in a, in a musical performance, you know? <laughs> so it's like, uh, that's the type of thing that I think could have worked tonight if they really wanted to break format and go all the way with that. That would have been fun. Okay, let's talk about this monologue we got tonight. So Aubrey Plaza finally hosting SNL. So exciting that she was there. This is written by your your usual monologue writers, DiCenzo and Nordwin, but also Rosebud Baker and Neil Casey coming back, former writer of Saturday Night Live coming back, uh, writes this monologue tonight. And uh, I felt like this cold open took place in two parts. Basically, Aubrey is there talking to us from the stage, introducing Grandma Margie and uh, talking about how she's voted the most famous person from Delaware over Biden Eden, even. And then guess what? We get an actual video <laughs> from the current president of the United States, Joe Biden. Now, this is a very rare occurrence in the history of Saturday Night Live to get the current president president on Saturday Night Live. Um, this goes back all the way to season one where President Ford was in the Ron Nesson episode of the show and actually said live from New York, it's Saturday night, broke format there in the first season. So Chevy didn't say it, we had Ford say it. And then season 20, episode four, we have Dana Carvey returning to host Saturday Night Live and we have George H.W. Bush there, uh, you know, saying <laughs> they're joining him for the monologue, which is really crazy. And of course, Obama appeared before he was president. But uh, Bill, just before we get to the studio tour and we'll talk about all of that, what were your thoughts? I know you're just a historical SNL guy. So this must have been cool to see Biden in the monologue. 